Guys, welcome back to the channel. On the last episode, we worked through all the piping on this dry sump system. We built this manifold up here, built our brackets for our oil filter mount, and got our oil cooler and piping all set up. On this episode, we are going to work through the turbo, yeah, turbo oiling system, and we're going to work through the oil cooler setup on the dry sump. So let's get started. Okay, so I may have cheated a little bit from last episode and started on some stuff. So um, last time this stuff wasn't here, what I did is I installed some hard lines. So we mentioned previously on the oil filter, the remote oil filter, there's that little fitting that is filtered oil that comes out right here, this guy, that one on the bottom. And uh, it's a small filtered connection. And it's usually used for the pressure, but what I did is I installed a little T right there, ran a hose up, and then ran some hard line to the feeds of each turbo. So you can see it runs across. There's another soft line, runs in hard line, and then we just have some uh, tube nuts, and they go right into the top of the AN. So there are tube nuts and tube sleeves, and that is stainless, uh, stainless hard line. So we are going to do something similar for the drains. The drains come out underneath of the turbos but in order to do that they're going to be a dash eight or a half inch line and they're going to a scavenging section if you notice though the scavenging section is a port thread and it's dash 12 and what we're going to do is we're going to build a manifold down here that is going to be a piece of tubing it'll have one dash 12 fitting that we can uh, connect a hose to from here to the hose um, and then we are going to weld dash eight fittings and then run hard line to that. So let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead, get some tubing cut out and uh, we're just gonna get everything laid out here, figure out exactly where we want stuff. And uh, yeah, let's get making a manifold and some lines. Okay guys, so I got the little tube here, my end fitting, and I'm trying to figure out exactly where I wanna put this. I was originally gonna put this in the front up here, but I think I'm actually gonna mount it to this cross member and if I put it on the cross member, I can run the 12-12 AN hose up this way into here and then up and then use like one of those um, like 120 degree fittings to kick it down and then get the hose bend. I said to be careful with the harmonic balancer because he's going to be right up in here. So um, if I want to use hose, I need to make sure I get a good tight bend here and anchor the hose down so there's no way it can get into the harmonic balancer because obviously that uh would not be good so i'm thinking 120 an kick it about mm, about here and then point it down bring it this way and then use the hose to bend over this way connect into here and then from here we can run hard lines up parallel to the existing feed lines around and rather than going on top we go to our drains, which would be nice and tucked. And it looked like I did it on purpose. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, before I get to welding all this up, I'm gonna go ahead and get some uh, AN hoses and just check to see how flexible they are and see if it's even feasible to get the uh, connection the way I want it. And then if that's good, then uh, I'll start welding everything up and mark this out. So just wanna show you sort of the thought you gotta go through with this stuff because the hose doesn't bend in every direction and uh yeah you just have to sort of not push the limits of it Okay, so I got this little guy welded up, ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and place it down here and I'm gonna start running these lines on it. Um, for you guys not familiar with tube nuts, um, basically what you need to do is you're gonna have a tube, you're gonna bend it to your shape, and then uh, before you flare it, you slide the tube nut on 
uh, I'm sorry, the tube uh, sleeve on, then a tube nut. No, the other way. Tube nut on, then tube sleeve on. So the tube sleeve is against the flare. And then uh, once you flare it, then everything draws up tight. And underneath there, you know, you can see here, there's the sleeve, there's the nut, and it pulls it in nice and tight. Now you need a 37 degree uh, and flare, which I use a 45 degree and then just uh, turn the, the point down on my lathe to 37 degrees. So it works decent if uh, I won't use it for like brake lines or anything like that, but it'll work fine for these oil lines and it's giving a nice 37 ish degree flare. So it's uh, working pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this tubing cut and then work on getting these bent up. Pretty simple bends here. It's pretty much the same deal as the uh, uh, feeds. So it shouldn't be too bad. Well, that's not gonna work. So this is uh, 020 wall 316 and uh, this bender is not going to work by itself so I'm going to cut this off what I'm going to try next is I'm going to fill this with sand uh, that's like a thing and plug the end of it and uh, see if I can get this to bend without flattening out with sand in it so oops okay guys so I filled this all up with sand and you can see here there's still a little bit of crinkling but I think that's going to be focus 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 my hand no it's not going to focus it's gonna be okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and rock with it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna get much better than that with this thin old wall material, but it is what it is. You can only crimp so thick, and it gets tricky. So uh, that's a little tip. Plug both ends. Went out to my daughter's little play sand uh, sandbox and filled it up with play sand. So obviously we'll have to clean the hell out of it because uh, it's an oil line, but it's gonna work. So I'll keep bending, and uh, we're gonna get this all mounted up. All right, so that is the final shape. This is looking at the front of the truck, so the oil's coming in this way. I did have to put a little trap in here, which obviously I don't prefer to do, but I still have a little bit of column head on top of this guy. And the other thing we need to remember is this has a positive displacement scavenging pump hooked up to it, so it is going to draw this entire thing dry, regardless of whether or not it's up or down, it's going to suck it out. Um, so that's always good. I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm gonna park this a little bit long and uh, tape it up, try not to make a mess of the garage and fill the floor up with sand and then uh, we'll go ahead and get this flared. Okay, so I dig that. You can see the line pops under over there, does a little soup to do underneath the pump, and then turns. Can't really see where it turns, turns and comes back up and then into the drain. So that is going to work. I'll have to make a little mount to hold this guy here so it doesn't dangle. But now we're gonna start the other side. Before I actually start the other side, just because of where I am in the night, I'm actually gonna start the anodizing process on this guy, then I'll finish the uh, drain on that guy, just because I have to go inside, but I can anodize while I'm inside. So, I'm gonna get that started. I'm not gonna show that on camera. If you wanted to see that process, check out the uh, carbon fiber video with the uh, billet intake, and I'll, it walks you through what I did for the anodizing process. But for this guy, I'm just gonna give a light sandblasting, uh, protect these threads on here, get a light sandblasting, and then uh, give it good old anodizing. So I'm gonna start that, and then when I come back, we'll finish this line. There you go, anodizing's done. Again, um, if you remember from the last episode, I'm running the wrong filler wire, so the welds come in a little bit later on the die, but it is what it is. I wanna run that filler because it's stronger, so I'm not really particularly worried about it cosmetically, but I'm just happy that it's uh, less scratch prone and has some corrosion resistance with the anodized, so we'll call it good. So I'm gonna move on. Let's get that uh, tubing made for the other drain. Okay guys, so laying on my back here, got turbo drain number two, goes underneath the filter mount, over the rack, back against the cross member, down to the fitting or manifold, whatever you wanna call this guy. So this guy here, he's still gonna need some sort of mount uh, to tie it tight to the cross member so it doesn't wiggle around. 
And then uh, I ordered a hose, another NASCAR takeoff hose, like this BMRS stuff. So we'll have a PTFE hose running from this guy to the first scavenge stage. Got like a 120 fitting out of that guy, comes down and then runs to a 90. So that should be nice and nice and tight fitting to the side of the pump and side of the rack. Should stay out of the way of the balancer and should stay out of the way of the um, dry sump pulley and mandrel that comes out of the front of the engine. So this is looking pretty tucked. I'm pretty happy with how this is all looking. So um, what we're gonna do next, I'll get those hoses in, mount those up, and then uh, we'll move on to the next item. Okay, so next up I have a heat exchanger here. This is a braze plate heat exchanger. Um, it's about a four inch plate, four and a half inch plate. Um, and I think this is actually a, uh, what is it? 40 plate pack, no, 24 plate or 24 channel um, plate pack. So I went on sweat.com um, and used their calculator and sized this thing out for about 60,000 BTU per hour, um, which should be plenty. That should be like a good, uh, Good for about six, seven hundred horsepower, which continuous duty wise, we're not even going to be close to that. So that's going to be fine. Um, what it does have there right now is it has a ring uh, face seal connections. This is actually an uh, old heat exchanger from my work back when you could still get scrap ones before they not stop letting us do that. So I'm going to take this guy, chop it up, modify it. I'm going to weld and fittings on and get rid of these. Uh, big old o-ring face seal connections because I don't really need them. So let's get started on this. Gonna try to get it in the bandsaw. I don't think I'll get it in the bandsaw. I don't know, I might have to just take this all to it. So let's get started. Okay, so I got my uh, hose hooked up here and I'm leak checking this, just checking the connections and making sure that the braze joints didn't fail because obviously if you're welding on it, yeah, the braze is gonna get hot. So I try to take my time, not get the braze joints too hot because if you do fail them, uh, you can get cross talk between the channels, which water and oil do not mix well. So obviously we don't wanna do that. So all the external connections are good. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take this and put it under a bucket now. Um, and check to see if there's any cross communication between these ports and this channel here. If there's not, we're good to go and uh, everything was successful. So it took a little bit of hose and uh, like eight different fittings to get this to adapt to airline, but it looks pretty good. No bubbles, so it looks like we're good here. I uh, flipped this every other which way and checked them all, so it looks like we're doing in good shape. Okay, so we're underneath the truck and I have the flash on. So I got some complaints last time that, not complaints, but suggestions that you guys couldn't see underneath the truck, which is completely reasonable. So uh, went ahead and made the uh, chromoly mount here. This is a chromoly tube, 83 wall, a uh, little eighth inch plate. And you can't see it on this side, but there's an eighth inch plate that bolts onto the weld studs. And um, it's actually pretty tight in here because I needed to make the 90 degree bends. And with this fitting and this fitting, that pretty much set the width of it. So you had to have it just about perfectly centered in order to be able to get wrenches on and lines on and all that stuff. So these are on and ready to go. Um, and since I last recorded, I put some of uh, these P-clamps. These are the P-clamps from the, um, uh, what company is it? Racetronic sells those for like two bucks or whatever. So I bought a whole bunch of those. And uh, what I'm gonna do next, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the lines for this. I bought a bunch of three quarter inch aluminum tubing um, and I'm gonna run aluminum because it'll be easier to bend and uh, I'll, easier to flare in this larger size. So I'm gonna go ahead and start flaring out the rest of the oil lines which are going to go up here to this guy which I need to make a tube and mount this guy up here. And then uh, yeah, we should be all done. Uh, with this and it, the oil system, uh, at least on the oil side, will be all be connected. Uh, and then I need to work on the water connections that go to this oil cooler, but we're gonna wait for a while uh, until we get the radiator system built and then we'll plumb that in because we don't know exactly 
where you want it to be. So let's get started on uh, making some lines. Okay, so I've got the easy part done. I've got one bend up. And uh, here's just a little clamp that I gotta try to hit. And I passed it down just like so. So the other one's gonna come in to this guy and then kick up. And then I'm gonna try to run a parallel path right here and then a parallel path here. Now the problem is when you're running them side by side, your uh, radii are the same. So it's gonna look just a little bit different uh, right where the, the bends are. So didn't plan on that, but it is what it is. I'll be able to manage with it. And uh, all this stuff's gonna get wrapped in a heat shield. So that's not gonna matter too much because the exhaust comes right down through here. So this stuff's all gonna get bound together uh, with like a, with a luminized uh, heat shield. So should work pretty good. So I'll try to bend the next one and uh, see if we can, how straight and parallel we can get it. Okay guys, so there you have it. So one thing I did notice is three quarter inch tube is kinking slightly a little bit uh, on these interior bends. It looks worse here than what it actually is. But I was able to get this all hooked up on this side, but due to a screw up where I bent the tube the wrong way, I am out of material and won't be able to finish it off to these guys. So I'm gonna have to go get another stick of three quarter inch aluminum tubing to finish this up. I think that's gonna finish it off for this episode. Um, I'm pretty happy with how everything got fitted up and is you know, getting tucked into the truck and it's looking relatively clean. So um, on the next episode, um, I don't know what we're gonna be working on. We might be working on the fuel cell stuff. So I'm working on getting some material for that and getting that designed up. Um, and then off camera, I'm gonna finish up these parts here that I was supposed to finish, just the two pipes that go to the front and make a little mount for that thermostat guy right there to hook up right here on the frame. So until next time, um, you know, share, like, and subscribe. I always appreciate it and uh, have a good one.